John Heald from Rotorua, New Zealand, set about building one of New Zealand's most unique live steam models. With the aim of simplicity, ease of use and fun in mind, John planned and constructed a 7 and a quarter inch cliche beam engine locomotive, aptly named Gadget. The Gadget is a 7 and a quarter inch cliche live steam locomotive using a vertical steel boiler with copper tubes. Differing from the original propane fired model, it is a coal fired boiler with a large grate area. Cylinders with a 50mm bore and 90mm stroke drive two chain driven axles via a jack shaft. Tipping the scales at 290kg, it proves to be different from any other model around. I think about eight years ago when I was in the States, I met up with a guy called Pete Mosley and he'd built one of these gadgets. Um, it was called a contraption actually and I was impressed with the valve gear on it. It was simple, it was kind of taking you back to the 1700s, 1800s and I thought one day I'd like to have a go at it and that kind of set the fire if you so to speak. That's where we went from there. And then when the Tamar was finished, um, <clears throat> I got hounded by Mike Massey to have a go at building one. And um, I decided to have a go at it, but a different, on different lines to the original, because the original was oil fired and I wanted to go coal fired. So it meant extending the chassis by another 150 mil. So that was where, that's how it all came about. Um, to be quite honest, it's, it's a hardy to build, but we got there. The build process was different to anything else John had attempted. The eye-catching A-frames, beams, cylinders and caps were cast in Hamilton, New Zealand and assembled together with the wheels, jack shaft and chain sprockets. The engine was slightly geared up to give a better cruising speed of approximately 9 kilometers an hour and runs using the Walsh Arts valve gear. The frame was also extended by 150mm to allow for a longer wheelbase and coal-fired operation. Well originally there were two people involved, we were, we were going to build one each and we shared making the patterns between us and it went from there and we got the chassis built pretty easy, uh, the patterns were easy to machine uh, the problems came when we started to fit the grasshopper valve gear and the, the drive to the grasshopper escapement to the jack shaft. But it was fun and games, a few swear words. Next, a steel boiler kit from Paige McRae was welded and fit with 40mm tubes at a 20mm diameter. The hydraulic test found all was in order and a native honeysuckle wood cladding was installed on the boiler and the deck standing out boldly from the dark green paint job. The final oil, steam and water lines were installed with appropriate lagging due to the corrosive atmosphere present in Rotorua, New Zealand where John and the locomotive reside. A whistle was made, however this proved troublesome on the day with some more work and fine tuning to be done. A 22 litre water tank and coal bunker were made from 2mm electro galvanised steel and installed. This was found to provide about an hour's worth of water supply and three hours of coal supply. Two injectors were installed and an ejector to operate ride car vacuum braking and the locomotive was ready to run. Two things really, I, I, I wanted simplicity as far as I could get it, number one. Number two is I wanted to make sure with possible new regulations coming in for the boilers that it was squeaky clean which we did, um, and it set the club in motion here to setting up a procedure for manufacturing steel boilers. We've changed a few rules in the way we do things. So from that point of view, it was good, yeah. No, not really, one of the things I was a bit optimistic or pessimistic about at the time was we lengthened the wheelbase on it uh, so it would go around a 50-foot radius track and that was a worry too, but we've proved today that it's 
it's fine. And with making the wheelbase, wheelbase wider, we don't get the bunny hopping, which has proved to be good. Proved its point, yeah. It is understood roughly four other engines of a similar design operate in the United States of America. Steaming the boiler to 10 psi took only 10 minutes and from there it was a simple operation with only minor adjustments. Enjoy the sights and sounds of such a unique engine running around the Tauranga Model Marine and Engineering Society track.
This is the second time it's run today and I've been really impressed with its performance. I thought it would be lower, lower speed for the gearing but it turned out quite good. The lubrication system uh, is only the second time I've used hydrostatic and that has proved to be working now after a few hiccups. Um, and basically we, that's all we've done, it's been good. It, yeah, certainly different. Um, you've driven it, as you know, and it's a different ball game with a vertical boiler. Um, you can get away with a higher water level, for instance. Uh, so therefore, it gives learners the opportunity to have a drive of it as well, which you're going to find out today. You can, you can drive around the Taronga track here on one water fill and one fuel fill. And providing you can coax the driver to open and close the door, you can have a good run. So basically, it's been built for beginners to use as well, especially the young years. Yeah. Absolutely.